to be back here again to talk to you guys about more jewelry and other things that are going on in my life. So um, I tend to use this as like a sounding board, I think, which is fine, um, maybe, but um, if my talking is too much, let me know. I mean, there's, you know, definitely a kind way to let me know, <laughs> but um, definitely let me know. Um, a couple big things that are happening right now in my life is my mom is getting ready to move over here. We looked at three houses yesterday in Kalamazoo and um, her and my brother and her two dogs are moving this way, which I'm so excited about. Um, there's one house that is a contender and the other two houses, probably not so much, but um, she wants to give another week. Maybe a couple more will pop up that she can run over here real fast. Well, I say real fast. She's three and a half hours away, but she can run over here and take a look at, or I can walk through with my phone and show her what the place looks like. Um, I'm dealing with a realtor that helped me find my place when I moved down to Kalamazoo when Shane and I got together. And um, she is fantastic and she'll make sure my mom's in a really great neighborhood. Um, so that's big news. My mom is turning 70 in October and I would really love to have her nearby um, in case anything were, that she would need anything or anything that were, would happen. Like she needed to get uh, medical care or anything like that. So it'll be a really nice thing to have her here. Another big thing that happened is um, my son is moving back home. Um, he's actually moving in today. Um, just a long story short, you know, everyone when they're a young person has times where they may not be able to make it on their own yet, and but they're they're ready to go on their own mentally and they just wanna get out from underneath mom and dad, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. But he, you know, fell in some really hard times and, you know, it's okay. I'm not the kind of parent who is an I told you so parent. Um, I'm just going to be his soft place to land. And with God's help and his grace, I will help guide him to do the things that he needs to do for himself or wants to do for himself to improve his future. So um, if everyone could just say a little prayer for him, that would be wonderful. Um, he could use all the guidance in the world and I could use the guidance as his mom to make sure he's getting pointed in the right direction. Um, but today I am going to be making a bracelet for in honor of Wendy. It's going to be very beachy. It makes me think of her and there's actually like a little bit of explanation behind some of the beads that I'm using today why um, I wanted to put these together. So um, I hope you enjoy it. And um, like always, please make sure you let me know what you thought. Um, if there's anything that you would like to see me change about what I did, or if you have any great suggestions for um, my audio or my video or my designs or anything, I love constructive talk, right? So. Um, we're all learning together and we're all learning all the time. You never stop learning. And I would really love to hear all your great ideas and your suggestions as well. Um, thank you again for all your comments. And I do apologize that I am not able to reply to every single one. I will do my best every morning and every evening to reply to a couple um, more comments. And if I did miss you, it's not because I didn't... Um, want to comment is because I didn't see it right away. So um, it's a little overwhelming, but I do love it so, so much. And I do want to continue to hear from all of you. Um, and again, if I didn't catch you right away, I'm sorry, but I will go back and I will try to make sure I grab anybody and, that I haven't replied to and tell you thank you or comment back to you. Um, I do appreciate all your support. I know that um, this is something really powerful that Chris has put together and um, we're gonna all do our best to honor his amazing wife. And um, that's it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start turning this around so that I don't get all weepy and uh, we'll get, to get, get together and start making this bracelet. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm back and um, I just wanna say first of all, I'm sorry for if there's any added background noise. Um, I have the windows open and it's a beautiful day. So you guys will just might have to listen to the birds calling. 
um, just like I am. If it gets to be too obnoxious, I will, of course, um, get rid of that noise and I will close the windows. But it's a beautiful day here in West Michigan and um, I just don't want to waste that glorious sunshine and that beautiful breeze that keeps coming through. And that beautiful breeze that keeps coming through reminds me of the beach. And it reminds me of just soaking up the sun and hearing the waves crash, whether it be on a lake like Lake Michigan or the ocean. Either way, it doesn't matter. I love it all. So I also, because it's going to be about the beach, I am making this for Wendy. And there's many reasons why. First of all, the beach. <laughs> Um, second of all, um, when I had placed an order with her one time, she had sent me some of these really cute um, turquoise glass crackly beads and I thought they were so pretty. And all I kept thinking is I can make something from these and, and it was just like a little small baggie just to say thank you for placing an order and it was so kind and it was so generous but I wanted more of them. So I reached out to her and I said, hey, where did you get those little blue, uh, turquoise blue, aqua, whatever, crackle beads? And she said that she thought maybe she got them from Dollar Bee Club, but she couldn't remember. And then she told me that she was just going to send me all the ones that she had. And I thought, wonderful. And so I asked her, I said, well, how much, how much do you want? And she said, nothing. And even though I insisted on paying her, she kept telling me no you know i'm going to just send them to you and she did and she must have sent me everything she had because i have so many and i've been kind of hoarding them because i was waiting for you know the for me the perfect project i'm sure you guys all have stuff like that but it's probably honestly more with like um a focal bead that you found that you absolutely love or something like that or maybe something that you took apart that used to belong to someone that you cared about and you wanted to make it into something very special to remember that person i don't know there was something about these little teal whatever turquoise crackle beads that were very special to me and now I figured out that I know why. It's because I'm going to be using them to make something that reminds me of how I see Wendy. So also to part of the things that is kind of heartbreaking, when I had stumbled upon a website, um, Tamara Scott Designs, I had found these beads that change color with heat or cold and they're so cool they're so so cool i mean this one was a mermaid and i kept thinking oh i'm gonna send that to wendy i'm gonna send that to wendy and i had like a little you know stash of like gifty things that i was going to send her well i'm also the world's biggest procrastinator so i never did get a chance to send them to her and i thought well you know what i'm working this one into my bracelet that I'm going to make. Um, so that's that's that story. Um, but yes, these beads change color and you notice that there's some green and some purple and now some pink, but it changes with the heat or the cold. And it's just beautiful. It kind of reminds me of, you know, maybe babies of the 80s remember mood rings or 80s and 70s, I think, because mood rings were really popular back then too. And, or the late 80s when they had hypercolor t shirts and sweatshirts. And I had to have one. You know, it, it's, it's probably the silliest thing in the world because all I end up doing is just showing made it look like I had sweaty armpits basically because that's where my warmest spot in my body was so but I anyway I had to have one because everybody had one and um, I wore it all the time so that's what it kind of reminds me of it's like a little bit of a throwback um, and we have some little charms that of course we're going to use as well and I'm going to make a bracelet that's going to have some dangles and also some larger focal beads so it's going to be fun i think and i have not tested this one yet i have not tried this so um 
I'm going to be probably stumbling along uh, as we go. Uh, so what you're going to need is you're going to need some focals that are your favorite color. It doesn't have to be a beach theme. It can be anything you want. I chose five um, focals. I may not need all five. I chose a few little accents and some charms and I have my large lobster clasp and I have a whoop, giant um, bead cap that we're going to be using um, as well. I have some seashells that are that are that um, have holes in them and I'm gonna be using some of these. I have some spacers because I probably will need them. I also have some of these little, little flat shell pieces that I'm going to use as the spacers in between beads. And I have some little teeny tiny like light blue um, pearls and some larger pearls that I'm gonna be using. These of course aren't real pearls or glass pearls, but I'm gonna be using those as well. I have some round head pins, um, some seven strand beadalon wire um, I'm gonna be using. And I have a few of the jump rings. I also have, which I started this because I, you know, so just pretend you don't see this. <laughs> I also have eye pins and I have about six inches length of chain. Now you can use whatever color metals you want, be creative, do whatever you like. Um, I know fall is here and people probably aren't even thinking about the beach, but I always think about the beach. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. So I am going to pause this for now. I'm going to shut my windows because for some reason my neighbor behind me is hammering and I have no idea why. And now I can hear the coach whistle from the soccer game that is going on in the park nearby. So I will take care of that so we don't have any interruptions and I'll come back and we'll get started. All right, so we're going to start with the um, beating the wire part of the bracelet first because I don't know exactly how long I want my, um, how long I'm gonna need my little dangly metal chain part to be. So I wanna start with this first to make sure I get all the ones on that I wanted to get on. Um, so I did need some crimp tubes and also some wire guardians. And I'm going to go ahead and just start with that. I'm gonna feed on my crimp tube. And um, Wendy is right, uh, good crimp tubes are the best. They make the best crimps. They hold up better than the rest. And they are a little more expensive, but they are worth it if you don't have to worry about your piece falling apart or breaking. So I fed on my crimp tube, and now I am just threading my wire through my wire guardian through the other side and pulling it up to the top. I'm going to push my crimp tube up, making sure that my wires are not crossed up to about there. And then I am going to just crimp that down. And if you're wondering, I'm using the number two crimp tubes. I feel like those are usually my universal ones. I do have other sizes, of course, but I do like the number two. And these are the crimp pliers that I have. So I go into the last one here first to make the little macaroni noodle. And then I flip it around and I use the very first one to just squeeze it together. Like so. And just like that. So it looks nice, it looks good. And I am going to do like Wendy had taught us and I'm going to just pinch that close a little bit because she's right. It just does look nicer. It's kind of more streamlined and it just looks good. So you can see that. And then I'm going to start threading on some of my beads. And I want to start with these little gold rounds. I don't have very many left. I dug into my bead soup form. I have two. So I think that's going to be perfect. And I'm going to tuck that little tail in there just like that. And then I want to use this little polka dotted one next, because I think it's just darling and it's gonna look really good right next to that gold bead. Just like that. And then I would like to use just maybe the plain blue one. I do like that one a lot. So I'm gonna just 
thread that right on. And I'm not putting anything in between my beads. I'm just letting them touch each other like this. Um, you're more than welcome to, of course, use your best ideas, whatever you like. If you want to do some kind of spacers or if you would like to do um, maybe some bead caps, you definitely can. I just feel like this bracelet's gonna have a lot going on so it doesn't need anything more than what I'm doing here. All right, and then I don't, like I said, I don't know how much room I'm going to have. I don't know if I'm gonna use this star. I might use it maybe later on, maybe I can do a cute pair of earrings because I do have two of these adorable stars. Or maybe I can do um, something with a necklace or even a keychain, like one of Wendy's cute little purse dangles that she makes. So I'm gonna set that guy aside and I am going to use my little color changing focal bead next. But and I am also going to put on just two gold spacers on the other side of it because the hole on these are so large. I mean, they are perfect for leather. I believe you can get like a two millimeter leather through that hole. So I'm gonna do that. And that'll just kind of make it a little bit snugger in between and then I think I'm going to use my last large blue one this one has like something on it I don't think I want to use that one so I'm going to set that one aside and grab another because I do have another one here just this big blue sea glass looking bead okay and then I'm going to beat on my last gold bead and that's going to be it for my threaded part. So it's going to look like that. And I think that's cute. I think it's really pretty. And you can see the little mermaid. She's really pretty. All right, and then I'm going to feed on my crimp tube. And of course, when I cut my wire, I cut it so long, like probably way too long, way more than what it needs to be but I would rather have that than have not enough wire and have to start over. So um, I do save all my, my scraps because I know I could use them for later projects, like if I wanna make a tassel or something. So I will save this. I have a, a jar that I put all my, my scraps in and I dig through it occasionally when I'm looking to do something smaller or if I need just a few extra little pieces, I'll dig through it. So just like before, I'm putting my crimp tube on, I put my wire guardian on, and I'm threading my beading wire through, and I'm threading it through my crimp tube as well. And this is where I struggle to keep the wires from not crossing. I have a hard time with it. So I'm just gonna pull that as close as I can to get to that bead, and I'm gonna try to remember that this side needs to stay on this side when I go to crimp it. So now I'm going to put my crimp pliers on and I'm hoping you guys can see this, but I'm using the very last hole and I'm not pulling it so tight that there's not gonna be any movement, but I also don't want to have too much movement. All right, so I got that. And now I will crimp it the other way in the very first hole. Like so, and then I will just give this a little squeeze again too, just to make it look a little more streamlined. And you are more than welcome to feed this back through a bead or two. Um, I have learned to do that because of Wendy. I know that um, there are times that I don't do it, but I always just feel better about it whenever I do. <laughs> and um, it may be silly or whatever, and that's fine, but I, I prefer to do it. So there we go. And that's the first part of our bracelet. And of course your measurements are gonna depend on if this is something that you're going to wear yourself or if you're going to give it away as a gift. I myself am going to be wearing this, so I will, I'm will. i making it to the size that I would need to wear it. So there's that part, and we're gonna just set that aside now. And then I had started this, I put on an eye pin on the end of this one chain. And you can see I started hanging some dangles from it and I am trying to wire wrap most of them to this, 
But for some added dimension, I will be using some jump rings to attach them as well. And the reason why it's on this head pin is because I want it to go through this, like that. So it's going to just go through this large bead cap. And it's just gonna kinda, it, <laughs> it honestly reminds me of like a cornucopia, but it's going to just kinda hold everything together and I'm going to continue to just hang some dangles down from here until I get the length that I needed. Um, so what we're also going to do is we're going to use a bead at the top of this because we're going to need to um, finish the, the top off. So I'm just going to string on one of these gorgeous little crackle turquoise beads that Wendy gave me and I am going to do a simple loop with it. All right, so we're going to grab it like this. Actually, you know what? I think I want to do a wrap. I think it'll feel more secure. So we're going to do a wrap loop <laughs> and I am going to grab it here and I'm just going to push that over so I have a little space. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to put it right in that little, that little corner of my bend. And then I'm going to come up over the top of my round nose pliers like that and just flick my wrist over, come back around to the bottom. And see now I have a loop, but now I need to finish this loop off. So I'm going to grab my pliers, my bent nose pliers, and I'm going to grab a hold of that loop, switch my hands, and I'm going to use my other pliers to wrap it. These are a lot stiffer than my ball head pins. Um, my ball head pins I can usually just wrap really fast with my fingers, but this one, you definitely have to use your pliers because it's so thick. So straighten out my little loop a little bit, clip off that extra, all right, got my little garbage, my little garbage pan, and just squish that little notch in so that it doesn't get snagged on anything. Okay. All right, so we have that piece. And now we're gonna go ahead and start making some more dangles and hanging those dangles from there. And I will go through some with you and we will sh show you how to make them on, put hang them on your chain as a uh, wrapped loop. And then I will stop the camera and I will do the rest of the dangles myself so you don't have to watch me do every single one. But I wanna do a little assortment here. So we're gonna grab a few of each. These little seashells are just adorable and I got them at Michael's. They have a little tiny hole all the way through them. And the one thing I have to say about these, they are super fragile like you would expect uh, seashells to be, but they are adorable and I can't resist but to use them. So. What I'm going to be doing is I try to make it so that it's going to, um, well, it makes me feel better anyway, hold better. So I am going to thread through the top so that that's how it's going to hang. You don't want to thread through the other way and wrap the other way because then you'll see the underside of the shell and it's just not as pretty as the top part of the shell. And then I'm going to use some of my gold spacers, this is where I really enjoy using them on these shells because it kind of stabilizes them. So on the underside, if you just put one of your little spacers right underneath, it'll give you a good spot to do your wrap loop. And it'll kind of stabilize that shell so it's not sliding up and down your head pin. All right, so we will grab pliers Go right down to the bottom and be careful not to press down too hard because if you do do this too hard, you will crack that shell and you'll just need to grab a new one and start over. So I'm right above that little uh, spacer bead and I'm going to just push my wire over, grab my round nose pliers, put it in that little corner right there 
bring my wire over the top, back down around the side, flick my wrist over just so that you can have your knuckles facing up, and you're going to put that wire right underneath your pliers, just like that. You know, these are so soft, I usually just leave them on my round nose pliers. I'm sure that must be like a, a Jewelry 101 no-no, but um, that's what I usually do, because this one I'm gonna end up hanging from a jump ring, so that way it kind of hangs a little bit lower than the rest of those. So we're just going to wrap it here, and just a couple. I don't want it to be too tight. See, I still want it to kind of slide around and move, but I don't want it to go wild and be sliding up too much of a space there. All right, and I'm gonna clip the rest of that off. Smush down anything that shouldn't be sticking up. I'm going to grab one of my jump rings. I have some fours and fives. Um, I'm wearing my glasses so I actually can see, but I do want to use some of the larger jump rings as well just so that they, um, so that they hang a little bit differently. So I'm gonna open it up put my shell on there, grab my little dangly cornucopia, and just hang it from one of the loops of the chain. So the big frosty looking beads I got from Michael's, the seashells I got from Michael's, the pearls I have no idea, I think they were just in like my collection. Um, I did get the charms from, oh, I think the, the blue shell charm. This one, I think this came from uh, Bargain Beadbox or Beadbox Bargains. And um, my starfish one came from Hobby Lobby when they had that big clearance sale. They had like a set of five um, charms that were all beach related. So I chose this one. And then of course, I will link this person's website. And it's Tamara Scott Designs. She does a beautiful job. She even has some um, flatter lentils and she even has some steam beads that do this too. She has a lot of art artisanal beads. So if you're looking for something super unique, it's definitely a good place to go. All right, so we hung that shell I want to do a couple pearls and a couple of these little blue crackle beads. So these we're just going to go ahead and hang right from the chain. So we will go ahead and do another wrap loop. Again, just grabbing it right by the bead and bending over the top of my uh, chain nose pliers. Grabbing my round nose pliers and going over the top again. Twisting my wrist going back underneath, so it looks like that. And this one, we're going to open the loop just a little bit, like that, like you would a jump ring, and hang it on this chain. So I'm just grabbing any little spot that I want. And you can do this however you like. Um, someone may not like all the dangles that I'm putting on here, but, um, I feel like there's never too many dangles when it comes to a bracelet because I like all that added movement and added interest to your wrist. So I'm grabbing the loop right there with my bent nose pliers and then I'm going to wrap around. Again, not going crazy with my wraps, just enough to make it hold on. And I'm gonna come in and trim this off. Now you're gonna find that if you want a lot of dangles and a lot of um, detail to this, it's going to get a little crunchy and it, it's gonna be hard to get into some of these little spaces with your pliers. But um, just take your time with it and have fun with it and it will turn out. All right, so I want to use a regular pearl, but I would also like to put one of these teeny tiny little glass pearls these light, light blue ones. Um, they're almost a green, they're so pretty. Right there on the bottom and put my larger pearl at the top and I wanna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna hang it right from the chain. So I'm going to grab it here, bend it over, grab my round nose pliers again, 
go up over the top, flip my wrist around, go back underneath to the bottom, and I have my little backwards P or whatever, and I'm going to open that loop back up just a little, find a spot to hang it, which I think I want to go on this side right here. I'm gonna grab it with my bent nose pliers. These bent nose pliers are the best because you can get into like a tighter spot. Although I know I said in my last video that I'm really looking to get those, the really pointy tweezer type ones. I love those. So I have that now and now I just need to wrap. So I'm going to take my other pliers and I'm going to just wrap this head pin around, whoops, carefully and all the way back around one more time. Again, I don't wanna to do too many wraps. I don't wanna risk breaking one of these or hitting it on something later and breaking it because I had it wound too tight. All right, so that's gonna be good. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to trim that off. And I gotta squish that down because I think that one's awfully large. So let me squish that one in. There we go. All right. So, and this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna open these little leaves up a little bit more because they, they tend to get a little crowded. There we go. You know, these, this large bee cap, I think I got these from Andy, Auntie's Beads when they were having like, she always, they are always having a good clearance sale, but they were having like a 75% off or more sale. And I bought some of these in gold and I bought some of them in silver. I had used all my silver ones when I was making some tassels from them because they make the most adorable tassels too. But um, I still had these gold ones left. And I'm like, well, you know what? This is perfect. This is gonna be perfect for what I need it to be. So I'm gonna hang one more um, dangle and then I am going to stop this and I will, um, go ahead and finish up my dangle so we can finish this bracelet together. All right, so now I'm gonna hang the shell, but I do want one more little thing for that. So I'm gonna take one of these little blue pearls again, and I'm gonna stick it on my head pin first. And then I'm going to run my shell through my head pin so it looks like that. And if you remember, I like to use these little gold spacers underneath these shells just to kind of stabilize them. And I'm going to wrap this one directly onto the chain as well. So I'm gonna grab right there, right above that blue spacer, or that gold spacer, and I'm going to bend my wire over. And then I'm going to put my round nose pliers there and wrap over the top of my round nose pliers, flip my wrist over, go underneath with my wire so it looks like that. And I'm going to open this one up. And we are going to find a spot for him. I think right here looks good because there's nothing on the side. And I'm gonna plop him right into this little chain link if I can. There we go. Now this is where it kind of gets a little nuts. Like I think I'm gonna have a hard time <laughs> wrapping this. So. I am going to try my hardest to not make a big mess of this. So I'm going to grab a hold of that loop. And there's an airplane going overhead. We live really close to the airport. So I apologize for all that noise. It only happens a couple times a day, but when it happens, it's super loud. All right, so I am holding onto that tight and I'm going to take my other players and I'm going to wrap around. Ah. And maybe I didn't have a good grip. Wrap around. And one more time. Just so it's holding, but not too snug. Okay. So my wraps are usually messy and I, I'm gonna say that I do it on purpose. So <laughs> um, I struggle to make a neat wrap. Um, I can do it when I have a lot of patience. But if I'm trying to make a neat wrap, sometimes I get a little too obsessed with it and I'll keep wasting head pins and eye pins trying to make the perfect wrap. All right, so I just stick with messy wraps and I like them. 
All right, so that's what we have going on. I am going to finish up the length that we need and we are going to put the rest of this bracelet together. Okay, this is where we are. I have added a bunch of little dangly beads, pearls, and little seashells to my chain. And I joined both sides of the bracelet with a jump ring that I'm also putting some little dangles on. So I added a bead, a couple charms, and um, a pearl. So that's going to be this, the center or the side or however you're, this flips around where you wanna wear it. So I do wanna add a few more dangles on to the end here and then um, I'm ready to trim off my um, excess chain and try it on. So let's do a few more dangles. I'm gonna do another blue one here. If I can grab a head pin. So the minute I had turned off the camera, um, Cheeto thought it was a good idea to jump up here and knock a bunch of stuff over. So I kind of wish that would have happened on camera, just so you guys could have got a good laugh out of it. But I was not thrilled, I can tell you that. So we're just gonna make a couple more dangles and I am going to hang right on this chain from the wrapped loop. So I found it really interesting that um, everyone had different places that they really wanted to go for their little dream vacation and places that some people have actually been, which is amazing to me because again, I haven't been very far. And I really love hearing about stuff like that and you know, continue to share those things. And I will try to come up with something fun um, every time that we can just kind of go back and forth with and discuss. I'm, I love different topics and I have, you know, things that I like to do to make me relax and things that I like to watch on TV or movies and um, even music. So, and next video I'll do, I'll come up with something that we can all share together and maybe we can all like find something that might interest us outside of what we normally do. You know, just kind of keep it a little different. Especially for me with winter coming up, I know that I like to stay really, really, really busy. Um, if I, you know, sit around for too long, I tend to get really kind of bummed out. And I know that it's like a kind of like a seasonal blues type of thing when the it gets dark so early, and you know, you leave for work and it's dark, and you come home and it's dark. And I'm not gonna lie, there's many of those nights that I come home and I put my pajamas on right away. And <clears throat> now that is comfy and I love doing that, but it also kind of makes you feel a little bit like you're done for the rest of the night. You know what I mean? When I know that I have many more things that I could do. I could work on my hobby. I could, you know, uh, maybe read a book or, watch a show that I've been wanting to watch or just sit there and visit with my husband or play a game with him or something. Uh, we love board games, so we do that. We like those, um, we actually got really into those solving mystery games that you can order. And those for us are a lot of fun, especially the ones that take, you know, six months, you get six different shipments. And, you know, we've had the whole like police board <laughs> on my kitchen wall with, different strings going from one thing to the next. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's so much fun for us. We feel like we're really doing something constructive using our brains because there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, things to try to solve each month. Like they give you a goal each month to solve something. And I've always been one of those people that I love mysteries and I love um, things that make me wonder what is happening and what's going to happen. I was a huge reader of Nancy Drew growing up, and I think that she was the one who um, <laughs> opened my mind to all these little mysterious things. Her, those books were a lot of fun to me. So I read those like crazy. I think I've read every single one there was. I had a, I went to the library often and just grabbed as many books as I, they would allow me to take home at once. And then I would just, hide away in my room and just read and get lost in another whole world and to me that was 
the best way to um, deal with me wanting to get outside of what was going on in my life. I noticed that my reading picks up when there's something um, that's you know weighing on my mind and I need just to be able to pray about it, put it aside, and then give myself another thing to concentrate on, something that feels a little more constructive than just replaying scenarios in my head over and over and over again. So that's, um, that's what I like to do. And um, like I said, I will come up with something and a fun topic that we can kind of bounce back and forth to each other. And hopefully we can all have fun and just chit chat a little bit. All right, I think I'm putting my last one or two on maybe. So let me take a look at this and see. Let me see. And then we'll put our clasp on. I'm gonna squeeze that down a little bit. All right. Let me just double check this. Oh yeah, because I want a little bit of chain that's going to be um, not used for dangles or anything. So, all right, perfect. So on this end, I am going to put my jump, my yeah, jump ring and my um, lobster clasp. check here take off about this much and again I will reuse this chain I will probably end up using it for um, maybe for some dangles on earrings or maybe even um, like a just an extender on a necklace because it's that's like a really great length for an extender on a necklace so I will definitely reuse that and now I'm gonna find my little end here because it kind of jumped away from me and I'm going to add my larger jump ring to that. And then we're going to try it on and we're going to see how it fits. And if I did my stuff right here, it should fit pretty good. All right. Okay, I'm going to clean up my mess real quick. Just throw those in a little, in a little dish. Sort that out later. All right, so this is what I've got. This is my Wendy bracelet. And I think that it's pretty perfect. I love it. I love it. It's so much fun. Okay, now I'm gonna put it on and we'll see how it looks on. And I don't like my bracelets to be too tight. I do like them to move around a little bit, but I could have made this one just a little bit shorter and I might do that. I might go up to this link here because it is awfully big. Um, but I think, I'll, you know what, I, I'll do that right now and I will just leave the rest of that chain on there and then maybe hang something from it. So that's, that's the thing about this, like we're always redoing it, right? We're fixing it and making it better every single time. So I'm gonna put it right here. And then I'm just gonna hang one little dangle from there. And I think I'll do a pearl because I really like them. They're really pretty. All right. And I toss all my stuff aside, there we go. So one more little dangle right on the end. All right, well, I, I did take a little break and after I made my the rest of my dangles and I went and started my red beans and rice in the Instapot and it already smells so good in here. 
so good in here. So I, <laughs> I'm like getting hungry now and it's earlier than what I would normally eat anything. So I think when I get done here, I'm gonna just grab a little snack and um, wait for my delicious dinner to get done. And again, if any of you want that recipe, let me know and I would be happy to send it over to you. And um, also with my little notes of what I do differently. And um, I mean, you can follow the recipe to a T, but I find that there's some things that I've played around with it enough that I um, really enjoy doing something a little bit different with it. So let me know um, if that's something that you would like to do. I'm not sure if there's anybody out here that like that likes to cook or anything, but um, I would like to be able to share our recipes with people, especially when it comes to using like the Instapot or the Crock-Pot. I'm all about um, making things delicious and easy. So, um, especially with having, you know, I, we're all busy, you know, and I don't have time to stand, you know, stand in the kitchen for two hours every day to cook something. So I like things that um, I may have a lot of prep to do, but the cooking part is done by a machine and it's fantastic. All right, so here's the bracelet and this is the part where all the danglies are and I think that is really pretty and it's really cute. And then if I turned it around, here's my big focals and here's my really pretty mermaid and she will change colors like she's doing right now because my thumb is hot and <laughs> I'm making it change colors. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys had fun and I hope you enjoyed this fun little dangly bracelet. If you have any questions about uh, where to find some of the, some of the things that I have, let me know. Um, I will share the link to Tamara Scott designs for all these beautiful beads. Um, they, you buy them by the each. So, um, which is great could be because sometimes you don't want a whole strand of mermaids, right? Like you may have one project that you want to do with a mermaid. So I think that buying them as each is, is like fantastic. So anyway, I will let you guys know about that. I will, um, be back on probably soon with another fun project. And if you guys have any suggestions of things that you would like to see, um, me do or anything like that or um, whatever just let me know and we will make it work and until then I hope you guys have a wonderful week and a very blessed week and I'm thinking about you all and thank you for those of you who have sent me friend requests I'm so excited that we're going to be able to be friends and I do apologize if it doesn't look like I'm a very active person online. I usually am first thing in the morning and then late at night because during the day I am running around like a maniac. So um, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it and um, again, have a blessed week. Thank you. Bye.